SpaceX's Starship finally embarked on its second integrated test flight, but like the first one, it came to a fiery end minutes after liftoff. However, it's not all bad news as the rocket showcased its immense potential and progress from its first test. But what went wrong this time? Did SpaceX learn anything from this test flight? Stay tuned as we discuss why the Starship exploded once again and how SpaceX can prevent this from happening in the future. On Saturday, a significant event unfolded as SpaceX launched Ship 25 and Booster 9 from the Boca Chica, Texas test site. The excitement surrounding this historic launch continues to linger. Witnessing the colossal spacecraft take flight again left a lasting impression on everyone present. As Starship separated and soared independently, it became evident that SpaceX had made a mark on history. However, it's undeniable that SpaceX's massive Starship ultimately faced another explosive conclusion. The second Starship flight demonstrated a marked improvement compared to the April test. In the earlier test, three Super Heavy Raptor 2 engines had shut down immediately upon liftoff. This, however, was likely not due to any fault of the engines themselves. In the April test, stage separation faced challenges due to blast damage to the launch pad, causing concrete chunks to eject and damage several Super Heavy systems. In the recent launch, the upgraded launch pad appeared to function as intended, with the booster emitting less dust and debris compared to the inaugural launch on April 20th. Notably, none of the Raptor engines shut down before the planned stage separation that occurred just under three minutes into the flight. The separation of the first and second stages proceeded smoothly as intended. However, after the successful separation, 12 out of the 13 center core engines on the Super Heavy reignited as planned. Unfortunately, this success was short-lived as the engines began to shut down again. By the time of the explosion, all of them had ceased operation. The unsuccessful reignition of the center core engines could have played a role in the premature end of the Super Heavy's journey, potentially disorienting the rocket. Given the current limited information, there's a possibility that ground controllers deliberately destroyed the rocket once they were certain it couldn't execute a controlled descent. This decision might have been influenced by issues related to fuel slush. A significant concern arises when a large booster engages in substantial maneuvers, causing the fluid to slush around in the tanks. This movement can uncover the ports supplying fuel to the engines. If gas enters the fuel lines that feed the pumps, it has the potential to damage the engines. This situation brings to mind the failure of the fourth flight of the N1 rocket. During this event, half of the engines were shut down, leading to the destruction of the plumbing. The initial stages of the launch and liftoff proceeded smoothly. However, at T plus 90 seconds, a programmed shutdown of the core propulsion system involving the six center engines was executed to alleviate structural stress on the booster. This stress was induced by excessive dynamic loads resulting from a hydraulic shock wave. The abrupt shutdown of the six engines caused a cascade of issues. Lines supplying fuel and oxidizer to the core propulsion system burst, igniting a fire at the boat tail of the booster. Furthermore, the number four engine exploded. The first stage began breaking up at T plus 107 seconds, with all telemetry data ceasing at T plus 110. The launch escape system was activated, successfully pulling the Soyuz 7K lock to safety. The upper stages were ejected from the stack, crashing into the step. Subsequent investigation revealed that the sudden engine shutdown led to fluctuations in the fluid columns of the feeder pipes, resulting in ruptures and the spillage of fuel and oxidizer onto the shutdown but still hot engines. Additionally, a failure of the fourth engine's turbo pump was suspected. It was believed that the launch might have been salvaged if ground controllers had manually commanded the jettisoning of the first stage and initiated the second stage burn early. The first stage failed only 15 seconds before its scheduled separation at T plus 1, 125 seconds, having reached the nominal burn time of 110 seconds, according to the cyclogram. In the case of Booster 9, given the current limited information, it's plausible that ground controllers intentionally destroyed the rocket after determining it was not salvageable. As we bid farewell to Booster 9, attention shifts to Ship 25. Following stage separation, the second stage Starship began coasting toward its destination. For just over the next five minutes, all six Raptor engines on Ship 25 were firing nominally. However, a concerning development unfolded when SpaceX appeared to lose signal with the vehicle. At T plus eight minutes and four seconds, engine shutdown was observed, followed by a flight termination at eight minutes and seven seconds. SpaceX's John Innsbrucker confirmed that teams had indeed lost signal from the second stage. He further explained that the flight termination system on the second stage activated later than expected, suggesting that the rocket might have deviated from its intended course, prompting the self-destruction mechanism to trigger. Analyzing the last altitude and velocity data presented on SpaceX's webcast, Jonathan McDowell estimated that Starship followed a trajectory reaching approximately minus 1,740 by 150 kilometers. If not completely destroyed by the flight termination system, the impact likely occurred northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands. 
The observed issue with the presumed Starship detonation seems to be linked to a potential oxygen-related problem. Notably, there was a noticeable acceleration in the depletion of liquid oxygen just as the second stage began showing signs of gas loss. This occurrence likely played a role in the failure of the second stage, indicating a correlation between the faster depletion of liquid oxygen and the identified anomaly in the second stage of the Starship. With the second test completed, the SpaceX team is now shifting their focus towards the third test flight. The launch pad and the water deluge system played pivotal roles in the delay of Saturday's test flight. While SpaceX had to implement various upgrades to Starship, especially to the Raptor engine, the FAA swiftly approved these changes during the investigation of the Starship IFT-1 miss map. However, the launch pad's water deluge and detonation systems emerged as the primary factors causing the delay. Once SpaceX received clearance from the FAA and the Fish and Wildlife Service, FWS, the launch proceeded at the earliest opportunity. Following this launch, the teams will redirect their attention to the Super Heavy Booster. The goal is to implement modifications that ensure the booster's stability, post-stage separation in future flights, addressing concerns and working towards enhancing the overall reliability of the system. In this second flight test, the second stage ascended to 148 kilometers as per real-time telemetry from the live stream and marked the second test of SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster. The booster, housing 33 Raptor 2 engines, adds a layer of complexity requiring seamless coordination for a successful flight. Saturday's test also highlighted the second instance of challenges with the flight termination system on the Starship. This system had previously encountered difficulties during the April test flight of the Super Heavy. Addressing and refining the flight termination system will be crucial for SpaceX as they seek clearance for the third Starship test flight. The flight termination system is a critical component of any rocket, providing ground teams with the ability to destroy the rocket during its riskiest stages. While not without its challenges, this test serves as a reminder of the intricate nature of rocket engineering, especially for a vehicle like Starship, designed to be the most powerful and versatile launch system ever created. SpaceX envisions Starship as a game-changing platform for launching cargo and crew to Earth orbit, the Moon, and potentially other destinations. The ultimate goal is to enhance the affordability of space travel through rapid reusability, despite the complexities inherent in such ambitious endeavors. Failures are a common occurrence in the challenging realm of space exploration, where risks and obstacles are inherent in the journey. NASA, having enlisted SpaceX to utilize Starship's upper stage as a human landing system for the Artemis program, will be closely scrutinizing the outcomes of this test. The current focus shifts to the meticulous analysis of the test's data, which will be instrumental in understanding and addressing the encountered failures. SpaceX's iterative approach to design and testing is anticipated to be a pivotal factor in navigating this phase. The company is likely to plan a third test flight, with specific parameters to be determined following a thorough evaluation of the results from this mission. The immediate objective is to refine stage separation, but future milestones encompass a range of critical activities. These include a launch to orbit, re-entry from orbit, and achieving vertical landings for both the booster and the upper stage. What do you think? Can SpaceX continue this trend of progress with future Starship flights? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.